This is a special presentation of Farm Journal Television. Hello, I'm Clinton Griffiths. Grab your books and pack a lunch. You're watching Corn College TV. Today on the show, agronomist Ken Ferry starts at the beginning, the systems approach to higher yields. Plus, know your growth stages. Missy Bauer heads to the field for a lesson in counting collars. And the speed of the tractor at planting time can have a big impact on yields at harvest. All that and tips for running level through the field today on Corn College TV. Hi, and thanks for joining me for Corn College TV. You know, corn is one of the most important crops in the world, and believe it or not, it's not that easy to grow which is why we brought together two of the sharpest minds in the business to help you get the most out of every acre and do it consistently year after year. To get there, we began with the systems approach and an explanation from field agronomist Ken Ferry. Ken, we've talked about it before, but let's start at the beginning uh, with a program that you like to call the systems approach. Yeah, it's... it's uh easy to say, easy to talk about to some uh, extent, but actually pretty complicated to, to implement. And, it, and it's, a, it's a series of things that continue to build on themselves. And for instance, this field here, uh, you know, our starting block is gonna be the basic soil fertility. You know, we can't change the soil type or, or the uh, soil texture per se, but we're gonna look at the basic soil fertility. What do we have to start with in this soil from pH to P and K? You know, what are the nutrient availabilities that we're going to work with? We want to design a fertility program to give us the base fertility we need and then we need a environment, you know, rooting environment to set up the crop. So in this particular field that we're in it was uh, uh, tilled last fall in a corn on corn situation and set up in a vertical till format. So he's, he's uh, uh, got himself set up for a good rooting environment so we can we can put a crop in here and we won't have any uh, restrictions to get to those nutrients plus the water that we need to grow this crop and then here at planting day we're going to start one of the most important steps of the of the season is we're going to establish a stand hopefully that is uh, adequate to get us the yield goals that we're shooting for and that's going to involve all the tricks that it takes to to make a corn planter run the way you want it uh, and to select the hybrid that you want in this situation once we've established the stand then we have to follow through with the implementation of right. the whole fertility program to make sure we have enough, for instance, nitrogen to carry us on through the other end, and that involves monitoring not only the soil, weather conditions, hybrids, and yield responses, as well as a pesticide, mm. uh, a pest management program. So somebody is paying attention to things like cutworm and, and, and uh, different insects, as well as the diseases that will sure. come along later here in the season. It seems like it all really just kind of builds on top of each other, but you break it out into pieces and make sure that that system's taken care of, and then eventually it all comes together into one big, one right. big system. And the better job you do of implementing a system and working with each individual piece, the easier it is when you get into tough situations. Not every year is a cakewalk, so uh, sometimes they're, they're, it's not uh, what we call no-brainer decisions. They're tougher decisions that you have to decide, am I going to implement this practice or that practice, that type of thing. But as you piece it all together, it it ends up being a lot easier to make those decisions. I think you've said before that sometimes it's not all just about you. Maybe you have somebody else that is better at something than you and you have them do that piece of the system for you. That's very true. It, typically it's not uncommon to find farmers that you know they aren't real good delegators and there's certain things they spend a lot of time doing uh, that really aren't in their best interest. They may hire that and find somebody that can do that better and even quicker than they can and focus their talents on other things. Uh, and sometimes that's just management, folk and they're focusing on management and making sure things are done timely and delegating those jobs to other individuals uh, you know, within their operation or hiring somebody on the outside to come in to help them. Okay, uh, big picture though, have a system, follow it, implement it, and work it throughout the year. Right, and if you have a system and a game planned and you work it throughout the year, uh, it's amazing at uh, how easy it is to make some of those decisions when things get a little bit tougher down the road uh, that you can go in. If you're following your nitrogen program and it gets derailed by weather, at least you're on top of it and you can make some adjustments in how much nitrogen you're going to put and where and, and prepare yourself for it. Still to come, counting collars and knowing your plants. 
We're talking growth stages with Missy Bauer after the break. And later, planning speed isn't about who's done first. Ken explains how to cruise to higher yields. But before he gets started, make sure that the planter is level and ready to maximize emergence. We'll explain later in Agronomics of Equipment. Corn College TV is brought to you in part by Micro Essentials, the next generation of fertilizer for the next generation of farming. bigger combine. Looking for giant yields? Take a look at AgriGold Giants. Exceptional genetics combined with the agronomic expertise of our corn specialists add up to giant results for you. Genetics, agronomics, results. AgriGold, the corn specialist. See more at agrigold.com. Hi, I'm Mike Flores of Flores Trading. And in my 35 years of investing, I'm convinced that market prices can be more likely predicted using technical analysis. My firm specializes in this. We can help you to deploy technical analysis in your marketing and trading decisions. At Flores Trading, you will receive free life quotes 24 hours a day, and you can trade right on your own computer. You can open an account online in five minutes with no paperwork. To get started, call the number below. Rust is destroying your valuable equipment and property. Rust Guy permanently stops rust the easy way. No scraping, grinding, or sandblasting. Brush, spray, or roll Rust Guy onto any rusted metal and it will not rust again. Rust Guy is not a paint, but an industrial strength formula that kills rust on contact. It leaves a smooth finish that can be left as is or painted. Rust Guy protects from salt, manure, fertilizer, urine, and rain. Call 888-RUST-GUY to talk to a rust expert or go to rustguy.com. I'm Greg Vincent, the editor of AgWeb, and welcome to our new site. This marks the end of many long months by a lot of us here at Farm Journal Media, and also even some of our loyal readers who were dedicated to helping us remain the homepage of agriculture. This new site is designed to have more vibrant content, easier navigation, and faster load times while still delivering the same quality information that you've come to expect from AgWeb over the past 10 years. So go ahead and take a look around the site and let us know what you think. AgWeb, the homepage of agriculture. It's not enough to plant the seed and forget those fields until harvest. Managing the crop means knowing what stage those plants are in. Missy Bauer heads to the field for a few tips on identifying the growth stages of early season corn. Today we've headed to the field and we're going to take a look at trying to identify the growth stages in early corn. Identifying the growth stages is very helpful when we start to do scouting and have a handle on what kind of stresses the corn is going under at different growth stages. It also becomes very important when we do things like uh, post-applied herbicides. There's different herbicides have labels as far as what V stage this corn can be in. So when we talk about a V stage or counting collars on a plant, what we mean by a collar is in here where the leaf comes in and attaches to the stem. You can see that it'll get kind of a light colored band around it, um, which indicates that that is a fully developed collar. So in this example here, when we start to count collars, what we want to look for first is what we'd call our first true leaf. So the first true leaf is much more of a rounded leaf as we can see here. So the end here is not very pointed and it's also typically a shorter leaf. The second leaf on this plant is much longer and it has more of a point out on the end. So always look for this first rounded uh, leaf. We know that if that leaf is there, then that's our number one collar. So that would be one collar, two collars, three collars, or a V3 plant. So we have several different examples here today. This example here is what we would call a V1 plant. So we have one collar that's developed on this first true leaf where we can see we got the rounded tip, but there are no other collars on here, so this would be a V1 plant. Here's an example of a V2 where we can see we've got our rounded leaf here. So this is our, our V1 or first collar. Here's a second collar, but that's all we have. So this would be a V2 or two collar corn. Here's the example we had just shown of the V3 or three collars, one, two, three fully developed collars. And then we have another example here of a V4 plant. Again, look for this first true rounded leaf, number one, two, three, 
and four. Again, looking for this kind of lighter colored green or whitish colored band tells us that that leaf is developed around that collar. So this would be a V4 or a four collar plant. So getting out into your fields, when you're doing that scouting, anytime we're scouting, we always want to record the V stage of the corn. So when we go to do things, as I mentioned, like post-applied herbicides or just recording different stresses that these plants are going under based on the environment, it's important to know what V stage that it's in. Pick up the pace or ease back on the throttle. Planting speed suggestions are next. And later, why are leaves dying on my young corn plants? We'll ask an agronomist. Plus, taking the time to properly level the planter, how to do it and what it means for your stand when Corn College TV returns. Corn College TV is brought to you in part by SFP, putting revolutionary technology to work in the field and helping producers get more from their crops and their fertilizer dollar. It's not too early to think fall, so protect your phosphorus fertilizer application with a veil phosphorus fertilizer enhancer. Research shows that fall applied phosphate protected by a veil increases corn yields by eight bushels per acre. That's why it pays to add a veil phosphorus fertilizer enhancer. So save yourself time and money next spring. Talk to your fertilizer dealer today for more information or visit chooseavail.com. Hello folks, this is Mark Gold with Top 3rd Ag Marketing. If you need help marketing your grains or livestock, give us a call. We offer one-on-one -on -one relationships that can protect you without the threat of margin costs. We don't speculate, we manage risk. If you're tired of paying acreage and management fees for marketing advice that hasn't actually helped your bottom line, then give us a call. Call today to get two weeks of Mark's private grain marketing email. Top 3rd Ag Marketing, earning the trust of American farmers every day. Farmers Feeding the World is about agriculture coming together to increase both hunger solutions and food production. It's right there between can and do. Learn more, give generously, dream huge. Confusion, doubt, fear, forces that drive the markets in unpredictable ways. It would be nice to find a voice you trust, a broker with an impeccable compliance record, someone with global contacts and expertise, a sought-after speaker who simply tells it like it is. All that with 30 years of experience navigating these markets. Someone like that would be quite a find. Bauer Trading. Experience at work for you. Well, Ken, I'm excited. We got the planter out running. So what you're saying is we want to run as fast as we can as long as we can keep the corn in the bin, right? <laughs> well, you know, it, there's so many things to worry about when you're planting corn from your setting of all your equipment to monitors to closing wheels, you just name it. But probably one of the areas that you see the most issues with is planter speed. Um, guys get nervous, they want to get going, especially now when it's late, and we want to push that speed and get it get done on time. And you truly do need to get done on time in a situation where, but you need to get it done right. right. Uh, and I think if I had uh, some growers, if they had a 120 row planter, they'd still drive it at six and a half miles an hour. So it's a situation where if you, if you really feel that slowing that planter down into a more optimum range of four and a half to five miles per hour is going to be uh, too time consuming and you're not going to get done in time, you really need to size up the planter or add planters to your operation. Okay. But there's probably nothing more simple than helping things out by slowing the planter down. While you have to worry about all the other adjustments and are they right, everything else, just the simple thing of slowing that planter down improves everything. Now we, we have some video of it going a lot, of a planter going a lot slower, and what we see is, is a lot less movement. That's right. If you think of the row unit kind of like a jet ski, the faster you go, it wants out of the ground. So it's got this upward lift to it and its reaction time as far as when it goes up, how quick it gets down, all that. 
makes a big difference. It, 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 the planters are better today at being able to singulate seed at faster speeds uh, than they were years ago, but at the same time, the row unit and the row unit bounce and depth control, which are, depth control is, is more critical than seed spacing. Okay. Uh, so, so seeds ricocheting, bouncing around all that comes back to the seed bed and it comes back to the planter speed. Now okay. we, can, we can have a very poor seed bed and still operate in optimum range and get a tough environment, but we can take an ideal seed bed with too fast a speed and get ourselves in trouble. Sure. One of the things growers will notice today is, is they're not getting the plants deep enough. Well, it's a function of going too fast. So they increase down pressure to hold the planter in at the high speeds and the down pressure starts to work against them and sidewall smearing and slot issues and things okay. like that. Okay, so we can solve a lot of problems by just taking our time, slowing down and going at optimum speed. Yeah, it, it's sometimes it's more emotional than anything else. They just look across the fence and see the neighbor lapping them and they get a little excited. But that speed is something that, uh, it's an easy fix. Leaves aren't supposed to dry out until harvest. Up next, Missy Bauer tells us what it might mean if it's happening early in the season. We'll ask an agronomist after the break. Plus, slowing down is only one piece of the big yield puzzle. A little later, learn how to level the planter for higher yields. I'm going to need a bigger combine. Looking for giant yields? Take a look at AgriGold Giants. Exceptional genetics combined with the agronomic expertise of our corn specialists add up to giant results for you. Genetics, agronomics, results. AgriGold, the corn specialist. See more at agrigold.com. Some people tend to dream small. Others dream big. But with agriculture's ability to feed the 1 billion hungry people on the planet and a projected global population of 9 billion by the year 2050, it's time to dream huge. Farmers Feeding the World is about agriculture coming together to increase both hunger solutions and food production. Learn more. Give generously. Please dream huge with us. I've traveled around the world a lot. I've witnessed uh, what we're trying to address here, and that's hunger. There's six billion people on the face of the planet today, and they say there's over a billion of them that have poor nutrition. They go to bed hungry. And I come back home and I witness the incredible productivity that takes place in American agriculture across our country. Somehow we need to do a better job of getting the food to those people that are in need. I guess when I look at farmers feeding the world, I say to myself, what do we really hope to accomplish? I hope we accomplish a design of a system that has a legacy that goes on for multiple generations. And I think with the knowledge that is possessed within agriculture, the funding that is in, within agriculture, we can get this accomplished. Farmers Feeding the World is about agriculture coming together to increase both hunger solutions and food production. Learn more, give generously, dream huge. Each week, we like to give producers the chance to ask questions of our experts. We call it simply Ask an Agronomist. And this week's Ask an Agronomist segment, one producer wants to know, and I quote, I went out to my field and looked at my young corn plants and the leaves on the bottom were dying. Why is that happening and how do I fix it? Well, what we're seeing on these young plants where these bottom leaves look like they're starting to die off, we got a kind of a closer look at it here, we see that these leaves are developing some small lesions on them. And then as these lesions are getting larger, we're actually seeing where it's kind of killing all of that leaf tissue in there. And even getting a fair amount of purpling or almost reddish color into it as that process is happening. The disease that's out here at this time is actually anthracnose. And this anthracnose lives on this old corn residue or fodder that's out here. So this is a corn on corn field. 
Uh, so we had that anthracnose that was out here from last year. We then had rain events, get a lot of splashing up of the spores onto these plants, and then they go ahead and go through their life cycle and in infecting these lower leaves on the plant. So typically on this small corn, which is about V4 corn, we should have pretty healthy green leaves from the top all the way to the bottom here. So this is definitely anthracnose that's hurting these plants here uh, and, and, take, and, and having an effect on the leaf tissue itself. Again, in a corn on corn situation and then having wet weather, we'll see this kind of be proliferate throughout the field and it will be hybrid dependent. So some hybrids may be worse than others. Well, Missy, it's that time again uh, where we head to the field and we work on our planter, which is really where yield begins. Uh, and so I guess it's important that we have everything exactly the way it needs to be whenever we start. Yeah, when we head to the field and get ready to start planting corn, one of the first things that we want to check is going to be our planter levelness. Okay. Okay? So we want to make sure that this planter is running level. When we talk about that, we're talking about running level off this main toolbar across the planter. So we take a small magnetic level, place it right on the toolbar. So you can just see right there exactly how it's going to work. We can see right there sure. in the bubble whether or not we're running level. So as he's going across the field, we're going to monitor that level. And if it's not right in the middle, then we're going to start making some adjustments. Okay. So our adjustments to get this main toolbar level is going to come from the hitch. Sure. So we're going to raise that hitch up or down to make sure that we're running level back here. Okay. okay. So this is one of the first things when we get the planter out that first day in the field, we've got to get that running level before we start doing all of our other settings on the planter. Okay, so we that is the very first thing we have to do. What happens to our uniformity if this isn't level? Well, what we see a lot of times in the field is that if this planter is running downhill, so in other words, my main hitch up there is too low. Mm -hmm. If that happens, then it really changes the angle and the pitch on the row unit back here itself. Okay. For example, if we were running a no-till coulter, that no-till coulter now would be running too deep because this whole planter is tipped sure. forward. It also takes the tail pressure off where our closing wheels are. So whatever pressure we'd have there, we would have less. It also changes the angle of the seed tube itself. So as seeds flow down through there, that's all designed at a certain angle. If we're not running level, it kind of throws all that out. Okay. And the opposite, if we're running uphill, we got our hitch too high, then we're putting too much tail pressure on our closing wheel system. And again, still changing the pitch or the angle of that seed tube. Okay. So we can really have an effect on things like seed spacing, even though maybe you calibrated your meters and did everything else right on your planter. We can get variation in planting depth if we're not running level as well. So you're watching here as that bubble moves while we're planting. It. Now the bubble's always up in the front right now. So okay, it's no so longer running left. and so it's really easy to tell with this level yep. whether or not you have everything in place. Right. And so what you're having him do, Missy, or whoever's running the tractor, is you're having them go ahead and adjust while you watch it to where you get it just right. Right. Now we're starting to go uphill, so it's going to throw it off a little bit. So how do we adjust for that if we're going uphill, but yet we're trying to run level? Do we just... Well, when you set it, you want to be down. Down, down in a level. level place, okay. And this is really where yield begins, is it not? Uh, at at the planter and at this moment. That's correct. You know, we spend a lot of time in the winter and early spring getting our planters prepped in the shop. We got to remember, as soon as we get to the field, if we don't go through this step with planter levelness, we kind of throw everything out that we spent a lot of time working on all winter and early spring. So this is very important and it has to be done in the field. We can't do this in the shop. Of course, wherever water goes, nitrate goes. And you can look at your tile line and you can say, I'm a good farmer, I'm doing everything right. There's no nitrate in my water. And that probably wouldn't be true. Most likely it would not be true. You may have less nitrate than your neighbor if you're managing your nitrogen program. But as far as water coming out of the tile, it's pretty much the more water you move out of the field, the more nitrates are coming with it. So as we look at tile depth, tile spacing, they all play into that factor. But again, it, we can move wa more water faster with 30 foot tile than we could with the deeper, wider tile. But in the end, we're gonna move about the same amount of water out of there, same amount of nitrates are gonna go in there. It doesn't have that much effect when we let the tile flow free. It's gonna be gallons out with the nitrogen. Thanks, Missy, and thank you for joining us for Corn College TV. Remember, if you miss something or want to take a second watch, you can find us online at the Farm Journal website, 
That's farmjournal.com. And here's what's coming up next week on the show. We're working from the ground up. Ken Ferry digs into seedbed preparation, how to get it ready, when to hit the field, and how to know what's too wet or too dry. And Missy takes us back to the planter for a lesson in row cleaners and a check of the gauge wheel. What happens if this important part is just too loose? Missy explains. That's next week on Corn College TV. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Class dismissed.